Lesson 13 The New Covenant Life Sabbath Afternoon June 19 Communion with God is for each one personal and direct. The heart under the guidance of the Holy Spirit will burn within them with the love of God. They are like trustful children. Christ looks not for merit. Oh, if all would come just as they are and let him make the preparation and taking them as his. The Lord only wants them to receive him and learn to wear his yoke and lift his burdens that heaven may behold that they are laborers together with God. Why cannot every soul that needs help and rest come to the burden bearer that he may have light and life? Christ could not help being bright and shining. His very work was to shine. Light means revelation, and the light is to shine amid moral darkness. Christ is everything to those who receive him. He is their comforter, their safety, their healthfulness. Apart from Christ, there is no light at all. There need not be a cloud between the soul and Jesus. His great heart of love is longing to flood the soul with the bright beams of his righteousness. Lift Him Up, page 221. What fullness is expressed in the words, I am the light of the world, John chapter 8, verse 12. I am the bread of life, John chapter 6, verse 35. I am the way, the truth, and the life, John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the Good Shepherd, John chapter 10, verse 14. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly, John chapter 10, verse 10. This life is what we must have, and we must have it more abundantly. God will breathe this life into every soul that dies to self and lives to Christ. But entire self-renunciation is required. Unless this takes place, we carry with us the evil that destroys our happiness. But when self is crucified, Christ lives in us and the power of the Spirit attends our efforts. We must daily consecrate ourselves to God's service. We must come to God in faith. We need to humble ourselves before God. It is self that we have first to do with. Criticize the heart closely. Search it to see what hinders the free access of God's Spirit. We must receive the Holy Ghost. Then we shall have power to prevail with God. Our High Calling, page 21. All heaven is interested in the happiness of man. Our Heavenly Father does not close the avenues of joy to any of His creatures. He will not only cleanse from sin and grant redemption through His blood, but will satisfy the heart longing of all who consent to wear His yoke, to bear His burden. It is His purpose to impart peace and rest to all who come to Him for the bread of life. He requires us to perform only those duties that will lead our steps to heights of bliss to which the disobedient can never attain. The true joyous life of the soul is to have Christ formed within, the hope of glory. Steps to Christ, page 46. Sunday, June 20. Joy. When the light of heaven shines upon the human agent, his countenance will express the joy of the Lord within. It is the absence of Christ from the soul that makes people sad and of a doubtful mind. It is the want of Christ that makes the countenance sad, and their life is a pilgrimage of sighs. Rejoicing is the very keynote of the Word of God for all who receive Him. Why? Because they have the light of life. Light brings gladness and joy and that joy is expressed in the life and the character. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 5, page 1144. When the Holy Spirit is breathing upon the soul, the will and the powers of the man must respond to its influence. Those who abide in Jesus will be happy, cheerful, and joyful in God. A subdued gentleness will mark the voice, 
reverence for spiritual and eternal things will be expressed in the actions, and music, joyful music, will echo from the lips, for it is wafted from the throne of God. This is the mystery of godliness, not easily explained, but nonetheless felt and enjoyed. A stubborn and rebellious heart can close its doors to all the sweet influences of the grace of God and all the joy in the Holy Ghost. But the ways of wisdom are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. The more closely we are connected with Christ, the more will our words and actions show the subduing, transforming power of His grace. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 625. After healing the woman, Jesus desired her to acknowledge the blessing she had received. The gifts which the gospel offers are not to be secured by stealth or enjoyed in secret. So the Lord calls upon us for confession of His goodness. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 12. Our confession of His faithfulness is heaven's chosen agency for revealing Christ to the world. We are to acknowledge His grace as made known through the holy men of old, but that which will be most effectual is the testimony of our own experience. We are witnesses for God as we reveal in ourselves the working of a power that is divine. Every individual has a life distinct from all others and an experience differing essentially from theirs. God desires that our praise shall ascend to Him, marked by our own individuality. These precious acknowledgments to the praise of the glory of His grace, when supported by a Christ-like life, have an irresistible power that works for the salvation of souls. The soul that responds to the grace of God shall be like a watered garden. His health shall spring forth speedily. His light shall rise in obscurity, and the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon him. Let us then remember the loving kindness of the Lord and the multitude of His tender mercies. Like the people of Israel, let us set up our stones of witness and inscribe upon them the precious story of what God has wrought for us. The Desire of Ages, page 347 Monday, June 21 Guilt-Free it is the will of God to cleanse us from sin, to make us His children, and to enable us to live a holy life. So we may ask for these blessings, and believe that we receive them, and thank God that we have received them. It is our privilege to go to Jesus and be cleansed, and to stand before the law without shame or remorse. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 Henceforth you are not your own, you are bought with a price. Ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Through this simple act of believing God, the Holy Spirit has begotten a new life in your heart. You are as a child born into the family of God, and He loves you as He loves His Son. Steps to Christ, page 51. The cities of refuge appointed for God's ancient people were a symbol of the refuge provided in Christ. The same merciful Savior who appointed those temporal cities of refuge has by the shedding of His own blood provided for the transgressors of God's law a sure retreat into which they may flee for safety from the second death. No power can take out of His hands the souls that go to Him for pardon. Who is He that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us, that we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Romans chapter 8 verse 34 and Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 516. Israel had returned to God with deep sorrow for backsliding. They had made confession with mourning and lamentation. 
They had acknowledged the righteousness of God's dealings with them and had covenanted to obey His law. Now they must manifest faith in His promises. God had accepted their repentance. They were now to rejoice in the assurance of sins forgiven and their restoration to divine favor. Every true turning to the Lord brings abiding joy into the life. When a sinner yields to the influence of the Holy Spirit, he sees his own guilt and defilement in contrast with the holiness of the great searcher of hearts. He sees himself condemned as a transgressor, but he is not, because of this, to give way to despair, for his pardon has already been secured. He may rejoice in the sense of sins forgiven in the love of a pardoning Heavenly Father. It is God's glory to encircle sinful, repentant human beings in the arms of His love, to bind up their wounds, to cleanse them from sin, and to clothe them with the garments of salvation. Prophets and Kings, pages 667 and 668 Tuesday, June 22 New Covenant and New Heart the heart that has once tasted of the love of Christ cries out continually for a deeper draft, and as you impart, you will receive in richer and more abundant measure. Every revelation of God to the soul increases the capacity to know and to love. The continual cry of the heart is, More of thee, and ever the Spirit's answer is, Much more. The life of Christ was a life charged with a divine message of the love of God, and he longed intensely to impart this love to others in rich measure. Compassion beamed from his countenance, and his conduct was characterized by grace and humility, love and truth. Every member of his church militant must manifest the same qualities if he would join the church triumphant. The love of Christ is so broad, so full of glory, that in comparison to it, everything that man esteems so great dwindles into insignificance. When we obtain a view of it, we exclaim, Oh, the depth of the riches of the love that God bestowed upon men in the gift of His only begotten Son! Our High Calling, page 366 When Jesus speaks of the new heart, He means the mind the life, the whole being. To have a change of heart is to withdraw the affections from the world and fasten them upon Christ. To have a new heart is to have a new mind, new purposes, new motives. What is the sign of a new heart? A changed life. There is a daily, hourly dying to selfishness and pride. One of the most earnest prayers recorded in the Word of God is that of David when he pled, Create in me a clean heart, O God. God's response to such a prayer is, A new heart will I give you. This is a work that no finite man can do. Men and women are to begin, at the beginning, seeking God most earnestly for a true Christian experience. They are to feel the creative power of the Holy Spirit. They are to receive the new heart that is kept soft and tender by the grace of heaven. The selfish spirit is to be cleansed from the soul. They are to labor earnestly and with humility of heart, each one looking to Jesus for guidance and encouragement. Then the building, fitly framed together, will grow into a holy temple in the Lord. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 4, pages 1164 and 1165. Be not discouraged because your heart seems hard. Every obstacle, every internal foe, only increases your need of Christ. He came to take away the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Look to Him for special grace to overcome your peculiar faults. Cry to the dear Savior for help to sacrifice every idol and to put away every darling sin. Let the eye of faith see Jesus standing before the Father's throne, presenting His wounded hands as He pleads for you. Believe that strength comes to you through your precious Savior. The Sanctified Life, page 90 Wednesday, June 23 New Covenant and Eternal Life
To the Christian, death is but a sleep, a moment of silence and darkness. The life is hid with Christ in God, and when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. The voice that cried from the cross, It is finished, was heard among the dead. It pierced the walls of sepulchers and summoned the sleepers to arise. Thus will it be when the voice of Christ shall be heard from heaven. That voice will penetrate the graves and unbar the tombs, and the dead in Christ shall arise. At the Savior's resurrection, a few graves were opened. But at his second coming, all the precious dead shall hear his voice and shall come forth to glorious, immortal life. The same power that raised Christ from the dead will raise his church and glorify it with him. Above all principalities, above all powers, above every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. The Desire of Ages, page 787. Christ is life itself. He who passed through death to destroy him that had the power of death is the source of all vitality. There is balm in Gilead and a physician there. Christ endured an agonizing death under the most humiliating circumstances that we might have life. He gave up his precious life that he might vanquish death. But he rose from the tomb, and the myriads of angels who came to behold him take up the life he had laid down heard his words of triumphant joy as he stood above Joseph's rent sepulchre proclaiming, I am the resurrection and the life. The Faith I Live By, page 51 When we are born from above, the same mind will be in us that was in Jesus, the mind that led him to humble himself that we might be saved. Then we shall not be seeking the highest place. We shall desire to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn of him. We shall understand that the value of our work does not consist in making a show and noise in the world and in being active and zealous in our own strength. The value of our work is in proportion to the impartation of the Holy Spirit. Trust in God brings holier qualities of mind, so that in patience we may possess our souls. As through Jesus we enter into rest, heaven begins here. We respond to his invitation, Come, learn of me, and in thus coming we begin the life eternal. Heaven is a ceaseless approaching to God through Christ. The longer we are in the heaven of bliss, the more and still more of glory will be opened to us. And the more we know of God, the more intense will be our happiness. As we walk with Jesus in this life, we may be filled with his love, satisfied with his presence. The Desire of Ages, pages 330 and 331. Thursday, June 24. New Covenant and Mission. There can be no such thing as a narrow life for any soul connected with Christ. Those who love Jesus with heart and mind and soul, and their neighbor as themselves, have a broad field in which to use their ability and influence. There is no talent to be used for selfish gratification. Self must die, and our lives be hid with Christ in God. The Lord would have us value our souls according to the estimate, as far as we can comprehend it, that Christ has placed upon them. Jesus died that he might redeem man from eternal ruin. Then we are to hold ourselves as property purchased. Ye are not your own, ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. All our powers of mind and soul and body are the Lord's. Our time belongs to Him. We are to place ourselves in the very best possible condition to do His service, keeping constantly in connection with Christ and considering daily the costly sacrifice made for us that we should be made the righteousness of God in Him. In Heavenly Places, page 60. Every moment of our life is intensely real. 
Life is no play. It is charged with awful importance, fraught with eternal responsibilities. When we look upon life from this point of view, we realize our need of divine help. The conviction will be forced upon us that a life without Christ will be a life of utter failure. But if Jesus abides with us, we shall live for a purpose. We shall then realize that without the power of God's grace and spirit, we cannot reach the high standard He has placed before us. There is a divine excellence of character to which we are to attain, and in striving to meet the standard of heaven, divine incentives will urge us on, the mind will become balanced, and the restlessness of the soul will be banished in repose in Christ. That I May Know Him, page 85 he who is truly converted will be so filled with the love of God that he will long to impart to others the joy that he himself possesses. The Lord desires his church to hold forth to the world the beauty of holiness. She is to demonstrate the power of Christian religion. Heaven is to be reflected in the character of the Christian. The song of gratitude and praise is to be heard by those in darkness. For the good tidings of the gospel, for its promises and assurances, we are to express our gratitude by seeking to do others good. The duty and delight of all service is to uplift Christ before the people. This is the end of all true labor. Let Christ appear. Let self be hidden behind him. This is self-sacrifice that is of worth. All around us are doors open for service. We should become acquainted with our neighbors and seek to draw them to Christ. As we do this, He will approve and cooperate with us. A Call to Medical Evangelism and Health Education, pages 26 and 27. For further reading, My Life Today, Abundant Life in Christ, page 295, and Sons and Daughters of God, God Promises Us a New Heart of Flesh, page 100.